before Camaro comes up for our scripture reading, I just want to uh, also thank you, Pastor Camille, for coming over and uh, and bringing the kids over. They're sitting in the back with us, and they're being so good. Thank you for that greeting, and thank you, Pam, for the wonderful um, pastor appreciation gift and uh, the birthday gift, which he forgot to put the little card in last week, so she slipped me a little card to Panera, so I'm really excited. My stomach is very excited about that. <laughs> so, so thank you so much, and now the scripture. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading from 2 Timothy 4, chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, verses 16 through 18. As for me and my life has already been poured out as an offering to God, the time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just. Verses 16, the first time I was brought before the judge, no one came with me, everyone abandoned me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood with me and gave me strength so that I might preach the good news and his entirely for all the Gentiles to hear. And he rescued me from certain death. Yes, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. And excuse me, all glory to God forever and ever, amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. amen, amen. Thank you for that scripture reading on this morning. Friends, God wants us to live a poured out life, poured out for God and poured into others. And so there's great, great benefits to living a poured out life. Number one, it's a sweet smelling sacrifice to God. And when God is pleased, all is well. That's number one. Number two, you get the crown of righteousness in glory when we live poured out lives. And number three, we get deep down soul satisfaction of knowing that we are doing God's work and that God's work is unstoppable. My name is Reverend Selena Johnson, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm pleased to be serving here at the oldest black congregation in our nation's capital, Mount Zion in Georgetown. We are in the fourth and final message in this series um, called Not Ashamed. And this message is entitled, as you may have guessed, Poured Out. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we thank you for this time to hear from you, O oh God. I pray that people would be inspired to pour their lives out for you in such a way that is pleasing to you and empowering to others. So remove me from myself, God, that we might hear this word from you, touch our hearts, our lives, our minds, and our very souls. In Jesus' name, amen. So back in the Old Testament, they had a system of sacrifices and not to gross you out or anything, but you know, they were animal sacrifices back then. You know, they would bring the bulls, they would bring the rams, the lambs, the doves, whatever it was. And, and uh, they would slaughter the animal and put it on the altar and just fire it up, right? 
And sometimes they would put a little grain offering on top, which was, you know, the, the cornmeal or the flour, whatever they were putting. And then sometimes, just to top it off, they would do a poured out drink offering as well. So they would take the drink offering and pour that on top. It's kind of like when you're cooking, Pam, and you, you have your cooking sherry or your cooking wine, Mary Beth, and you just pour it on top of that, right? And then you, uh, it just makes your, your, your sacrifice more pleasing, more aromatic, which just uh, brings out the flavor. And so um, it says in Numbers chapter 15 that when they put the poured offering, the drink offering onto the sacrifice, it was a sweet smelling aroma to God. Amen? In the Old Testament, they brought the sacrifices to the altar, and sometimes the power of God would come down so thick that the fire would actually come from heaven and burn up the sacrifices. And sometimes the smoke would just fill up the room so thick that they couldn't even see. They just had to fall down and worship God. And so Paul is referring to these Old Testament sacrifices when he writes to his protege, the young pastor Timothy, in our letter here in 2 Timothy chapter 4, which Camaro read for us so beautifully. And he says in verse 6, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. And so this imagery that Paul is invoking here is very powerful for the readers who had been hearing this. It would have conjured up great feelings of God's powerful and holy presence among them. Well, the Apostle Paul was in a situation. He was in a situation here. Um, it was a bleak situation, Robin, um, from all outward appearances. He was about to be killed because the Roman Emperor Nero was determined to squash this fledgling movement called the people of the way or the Christians, right? And so it looked like Nero was winning for all intensive purposes. It, it looked like Paul was defeated. The Bible in one year, day 295 commentary says it like this. It says the apostle Paul was condemned and in a dark, dank dungeon with just a hole in the ceiling for light and air. He was in chains, 2 Timothy 1, 16 says, like a criminal, it says in 2 and 9. He was lonely, bored, Janet, cold. Paul also must have felt very abandoned because it said in verse 16 of this text that uh, when he went to court, no one showed up to support him. He looked behind him at the pews, there was nobody sitting back in the rows in the courtroom, right? He felt abandoned. The commentary goes on to say that death was inevitable. According to tradition, he was condemned to die by beheading by the, nem the Emperor Nero. And from all outward appearances, so it looked very, very bleak. It looked like Nero was winning. But how many no of you know that we serve a God who is bigger than any empire and greater than any emperor? We serve a God who outlives every power-mongering tyrant that rises up to take the reins of rule in this here world. So what Paul decided to do in his situation, what he decided to do uh, is very inspiring for us today. Because if it was me, uh, Sheldon, I, I might have been a little bit tempted to despair. I, I might have been tempted to say, well, it was all for naught. I might have been tempted to declare defeat, Marcus. Uh, oh, well, Nero has won. He's crushed the movement. He's imprisoned me, the, the, the key leader, and the people are scattered and fearful. All is, all is lost. Now, I'm sure Paul, Jackie, must have had moments like that because he was just human, right? I mean, he was human just like us. Um, but what is so inspiring about this text here in 2 Timothy chapter 4 is what Paul decided to do. In spite of what he might have been feeling uh, in, in, inside, in spite of the obvious bleakness of the situation, Paul decided to act in faith, Sherelle. See, Paul knew that the Lord had not brought him that far just to leave him. Anybody have that testimony? Anybody have that testimony where you can say, I don't believe he brought me this far just to leave me? Though everyone else had abandoned him, Angel, God was with him. So instead of wallowing and giving up, what did Paul do instead? He decided to invest in the next generation. Why did he decide to do that instead of being like, well, I'm out of here, so I don't even care? Well, he decided to do that because he knew the God that endures. 
He knew that he served the everlasting God, the one who outlasts all regimes, strongholds, power structures here on earth. So what Paul did was that he decided that there was hope for the future beyond his own lifetime. Not just his eternal life, which would happen after he was beheaded, uh, but on to the next generation and the life that would continue here on earth. So he decided to build up his protege, whom he was writing this letter to and, and whom he was passing this baton to. Because Paul believed that the same power that was at work within him was still just as powerful to work within Timothy, the younger man. Paul was just crazy enough to believe that the same power that was at work within Timothy's mother, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, was still just as potent to work within Timothy. No matter what Nero was doing, or no matter what Nero was planning, no matter how young or inexperienced or shy Timothy was, the Holy Ghost power was still the same. Amen. And so now we have these final few words from Paul, his valedictory address. Paul encourages Timothy to live a poured out life. What does a poured out life look like, friends? Well, it's right there in our text. So if we go to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and we look at verse 7, verse 7a, Paul says, I have fought the good fight. And so that means that a poured out life means you stand up and fight. When and where God tells you to take up the banner and take a stand, you do it. So number one, a poured out life means fighting the good fight. And number two, Paul writes in part B of that verse 7, I have finished the race. Oh, hallelujah. A poured out life, friends, means you finish the race. You don't give up. You don't quit in the middle mile. Oh, it's so tempting when you get in the thick of it, Caleb. It's so tempting when you get to mile 13.1, Jackie, and you're running that marathon, and you get to 13.1, you say, oh my goodness, I've already gone far enough. I'm ready to give up. It's too much. It's too much. It feels tempting to lose heart when you get into the middle of the race. But if you want to live a poor out life for God, you got to stay the course. Paul says, stick to it. Finish the race. Paul goes on in verse 7 in part C, and he says, I have kept the faith. Oh, hallelujah. So a poured out life means you keep the faith. You don't stop believing, even if you don't feel it. I like how uh, the songwriter, the modern songwriter says, uh, speaking in God's voice, says, what if you call my name and don't feel me near you? Will you still believe in me or will you fear? And then the chorus comes in and says, yes, I will trust you, Lord. So we have to keep the faith if we want to live a poured out life. We don't give up when the tests come, but we just keep on going. And so then uh, he goes on. In verse 16, Paul writes, at my first event, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. And then he goes on in the next sentence to say, may it not be charged against them. Oh, don't miss that, friends. That's a hard one. Paul writes, um, they, they all let me down. Nobody was there in the courtroom. They left me alone. I felt abandoned, rejected, dejected, all those things. But then he writes, may it not be charged against them. So to be poured out means that you're holding no grudges. It means not only that you're forgiving those people who are unsupportive of you, but you're wanting them to be forgiven by God. May it not be held against them. Howard John Wesley has a famous quote. Uh, he said, offense is inevitable. In other words, in this life, somebody's going somebody's gonna to do you wrong. Offense is inevitable in this life. And he says, forgiveness is mandatory. Reconciliation is optional. Just because you forgive someone doesn't mean you have to become their best friend. But what it does mean is that you have to let them go. You have to let that grudge go out of your heart. If you want to live a life that's poured out and pleasing to God, a sweet aroma to God, you have to let that person go. You have to release them. You'll know when you've arrived at this point of pouring out when you really want God to forgive them. That's how very gone the malice is out of your heart. You want God to forgive them. So a poured out life is a life of forgiveness. And then finally, in verse 17 through 18, Paul writes, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered from the mouth of the lion. 
And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. To live a poured out life means that you testify. You don't keep it to yourself, Camaro. You tell others what the Lord has done, how he brought you out. How uh, when everyone else abandoned you, the Lord stood by you and strengthened you. You never had to walk alone ever. That's your testimony. A poured out person is not ashamed, not ashamed, not ashamed to testify. It was God who delivered me out of the mouth of the lion. It was God who delivered me from every evil that tried to come upon me. A poured out person is not afraid to give God the glory because Paul writes, to him be glory forever and ever and ever, amen. See, Paul did not want Timothy or the other followers of this fledgling new movement called the people of the way. He did not want them to feel dismay because he was suffering. He did not want them to feel discouraged at the, the shock and the anger they might have felt about the violence of his death. Paul did not want them to be discouraged. I like how Eliot's commentary says it. It says, Paul would show them by his calm, triumphant language that to him death was no terror but only the appointed passage to glory. So he speaks of his lifeblood being shed under the well-known and peaceful image of the poured out wine over the sacrifice, the drink offering, the sweet savor unto the Lord, amen. You see, Paul wanted to leave them encouraged and empowered. So let's fast forward to us today. Friends, we spend a lot of time lamenting still the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the other civil rights activists. We spend a lot of time lamenting that this era is bygone. And we say disparaging things about the civil rights movement like, oh, every time we take one step forward, it seems like we get pushed back two steps. It makes our efforts seem futile. But guess what? We serve the same God that Paul served. The same God who used a prisoner in a dungeon with just a hole for light and air to write the Bible. And he says in his words, God, let my life be poured out. Paul encouraged Timothy to rekindle the gift and to get lit for God, amen. <laughs> Can you imagine how encouraged Timothy must have felt when he opened up that scroll and he started reading that and the people he was reading it to, how encouraged they must have felt. They say uh, encouragement is like oxygen for the soul, amen. And so with whatever breath and life Paul had left, he wanted to use it to encourage that next generation who remained on earth to encourage the leaders. A poured out life, friends, is a passed on life. <laughs> Patty LaBelle said, when you've been blessed, pass it on. So encouragement is like oxygen and enthusiasm is contagious and joy is infectious, amen? Let me just say that one more time. Encouragement is like oxygen and enthusiasm is contagious and joy is infectious. So bring that joy in, in your poured out life. Paul wanted to encourage that next generation and Paul wanted to pass on his enthusiasm for God and remind them of the Jesus joy that they had within them. We should be the same today. So encourage somebody today. Encourage a young person. Like their YouTube page. <laughs> Cash app them some money, right? <laughs> Call them and tell them to get out and vote. Amen? <laughs> Write a letter to a budding civil rights activist and say, God's power is at work with you just the same as it was with the King generation. The next time we been, begin to despair the losses uh, in the civil rights movement or experience that we're experiencing right now, the next time we begin to fear that white supremacy is winning and will always win in America and in the world, we need to stop. We need to stop ourselves from being despairing and down in the mouth. And we need to stop and ask God, how can I live a poured out life? How can I encourage a young person today or young people today? How can I pray for them that the power and the conviction, the might of the Holy Spirit would be upon them just as it was with the previous generation? How can I convince them that Almighty God works within them, works within this generation today just as it did yesterday? Listen, they don't have Dr. King with them, but guess what? They have social media. 
<laughs> they have a lot of powerful things. Church, the Holy Ghost power does not change. It doesn't dwindle. It doesn't diminish. It remains the same. So the same God, who's the God of justice in the Old Testament and the New Testament, is the same God who's on the throne this very Sunday today. And this God has never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. And so to close, I want to say that I am praying for poured out lives here at Mount Zion. God wants us to willingly pour out our lives. And when we pour out our lives for him, he richly rewards us with the crown of glory. Amen. Not only that, but when we pour out our lives unto others, that next gen, we get the satisfaction of knowing that God's work goes on here on earth. Paul wrote, the Lord stood by me and gave me strength. It wasn't so that Paul could beat his chest and be like, look how the Lord loved me. It wasn't so he could be like, oh, look how saved I am. I'm just so, so saved and sanctified. He wasn't writing it for that reason, because we are all saved by God's grace. No, it was not for any of those reasons that Paul wrote that. In verse 17, the Lord stood by me and gave me strength. He continues on to write then the reason why he says that. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that... Somebody say, so that, very important word, so that the entire message would be preached through me and so all the nations could hear it. Paul knew he was being strengthened so that God's message would be preached to all the nations. Paul probably never could have imagined in his wildest imagination that it would be all the nations throughout all the history. He probably was thinking of the nations of his own day. But how many of you know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can think in our minds or imagine? Paul knew that he was being strengthened supernaturally so that God's will would be done in his life. Is there anybody here who God turned your test into a testimony? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Anyone here who knows that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you don't know where you would be right now. <laughs> Paul knew he was being tested so that his trials could be transformed into testimonies. And guess what? His testimonies became written down letters, which became the New Testament, which still today encourages and strengthens people of all nations all over the world. Paul could have never imagined this in his mind. Never. See, our human eyes cannot see all the glory that is God. It just has not been revealed to us in full. We don't know how or who or when or what our actions will affect. What we do right now could impact someone a hundred years from now. What we do right now here in DC could impact someone a thousand miles away in Korea or in California. We just don't know. So be encouraged. Be willing to live that poured out life. Be encouraged. Look around you. Be encouraged. Your condition is not your conclusion. Amen. When you are poured out for God and poured into others, it makes a difference. It has an impact beyond what your eyes can see. And that's why when we walk by faith, we walk by faith and not just what our eyes see. When we are poured out for God, it makes a difference beyond what our human minds can imagine. It's immeasurably more. Poured out lives go beyond our human lifespans. Poured out lives get the crown of righteousness and the satisfaction of knowing that God's will has been done here on earth just as it is in heaven. So pour out your life like a drink offering before God because the same spirit that was at work within Paul and work within Timothy's grandmother Eunice and his mother Lois is at work with us here today. The same spirit that was at work with those 125 souls who 206 years ago decided to begin this congregation and step out at fa on faith is still at work today. The same spirit that was working within Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as he poured out his life for this movement that he loved is still the same spirit today. So finish the race. Finish well, pour it all out for God because the same power that was within Mamie Till has not diminished. She might have thought, what does it matter if I have an open casket for my son's a funeral? My son is gone. She might have despaired, but the spirit told her, do it, Mamie. And Emmett Till's open casket set the whole civil rights movement on fire. So do it, finish it, cross the finish line, run the race well. Keep the faith. 
Get out the vote. The God of justice for the oppressed and the marginalized sees you as you're filling in your little bubbles. You might think, oh, it doesn't matter if I fill. Yes, it does, because God is looking at you. Pour it all out for God, Mount Zion. Pour it all out. Not in anger or unforgiveness, but with a calm assurance. Yes, I'll get my crown. Just say, I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. And I know I'll get my crown. I believe that the Reverend Dr. Calvin O. Butts III, God rest his soul, the famous pastor of the historic Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem, New York, I believe he got his crown this past week because he stood up for the residents of Harlem back when they were mostly poor poor and oppressed people. When I was attending that church, he orchestrated the construction of a major supermarket in the middle of a food desert. See, back in the day when I used to work in Harlem, and there were some spots up in Harlem where I'm told it was sudden death to let somebody see you even stop to catch your breath. <laughs> that was those deep, deep Harlem blues back then. But this was the mission field that God called him to and, and just, just inspired him to pour out his life onto this mission field for five decades. And so I know that Dr. Butts is now walking around heaven with a very great crown of righteousness on his head. And I believe that that same God that inspired and empowered him is working within us today. So pour it out before God. Pour it all out and bless others with that blessed assurance that God is present during the trials and transform them into testimonies. Just like a caterpillar gets transformed into a butterfly, it's going to change you and change other people around you. And you will say like Paul, the Lord never left my side. The Lord stood by me all the way. The Lord strengthened me each and every time. The same God that uh, loves you, the same God that did this loves you and sees you. And that's the same God that empowers us today. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. At this time, we are, we extend the invitation. Because none of us are worthy of God's grace, but God extends it to everybody. Jesus says, whosoever will, let them come. So if you are here today and you don't know this God, you say, well, it sounds wonderful to have somebody who would never leave me or forsake me, but I'm not sure that I really know this God. At some point in your life, you should come to the point of surrender where you say, okay, God, I surrender my life. So everybody, close your eyes, bow your heads. If you are here today, I can see you online. I can see you here today. If you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, the Christ, you can just slip your hand up. Or you can just raise your virtual hand if you would like. If that's you, just pray this prayer. Just say, God, I want to live my life for you because I believed you lived your life for me. That you came here in person to show me the way. That you died just for me. Forgive me and save me. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If that was you, I believe that Christ has heard your even faintest cry and runs to your rescue on today. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite our choir back up for another selection.
God. Hallelujah. Praise God for our music ministry. They did a four-part harmony with four people. That was beautiful. <laughs> Glory and honor to God. Hallelujah. Well, now, friends, it's time for our offertory. It is giving time. Praise God. God is doing amazing things in and through Mount Zion. Still, even after these 206 years, we continue to feed those who are sheltered challenged. We continue to be the voice of liberation and diversity here through our worship and through our uh, witness and through our anti-racist book club. So Mount Zion is doing a lot of things. And so we need your support financially. And there on the screen, Patrice is passing around the basket here for us. But there on the screen, you see um, the QR code. You can go to our website, mtzionumcdc.org, and click on the Giving tab, or that will take you there. And Sherwood, our treasurer, is holding up the 206th anniversary sign there to remind me. Hi, Sherwood. You all can't see him in there. He's on the screen. He's holding up because he wants you to give to our 206th anniversary campaign. We're asking everybody to give $206 or $2,060, or if you want to give $20,600, we're cool with that as well. And you have from October, which is our anniversary, all the way to the end of December, so thank you, sure, for that reminder. We also, you know, you can give on PayPal, which Marcus just showed that on the screen by um, sending it to our email here at Mount Zion, the Gmail that we have, or you can give by Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign capital M T Z I O N and the capital U M C G and Georgetown. Now I'm going to turn it over to our worship leader to lead us in a prayer. If you would stand as you are able as we pray for the offering. Holding and loving creator, the provider of all things, we strive to give as you have given with a generous spirit and a humble heart. We give thanks for all those who have given to further your kingdom. Bless these offerings and the givers and those who had a heart to give but were, able, were not able to. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we bless these offerings, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Do we have visitors visiting with us for the first time? Is this y'all's first time visiting? I know Sheldon and Mary Beth, you've been here before. So is this your first time visiting with us behind them? Oh, welcome, welcome. Would you like to share with us your name and where you're from? And are there any visitors online? I see a lot of familiar little squares there, but I have to be sure. I don't know. Um, good morning, all. My name is Demola. I'm visiting from England. And very love service. Next time. Oh, thank you. Good to see you. Hi, I'm Lola. Live in the neighborhood and first time visiting. Oh, amen. Oh, you live right. You don't even have to find parking. You can just come on over, Lola. <laughs> Thank you all for visiting. We pray that something that was said, sung, read here, or welcome, just blessed your heart on today. And we pray that you would come back and join us. Amen. We're going to go over a few of the announcements before I duck out here. Do we have the announcements? Uh, oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> So hopefully you all are getting your e-blast every week um, electronically. It's coming from our um, uh, Mount Zion email. Candy helpers, we need candy helpers for tomorrow. Shanita is going to lead us again in our candy giveaway because there's a lot of revelers who are out there in Georgetown. We need to make the popcorn with that fresh smell and have the candy ready. So if you can help, please contact Shanita or myself so that um, it won't be just us two here tomorrow and bring some candy with you so we can give it away. Amen. November 20th. We are inviting everyone to get involved with our Sacred Places campaign by helping us out with the mass mailing party. We want to send everybody in our congregation information and also 
your friends and family as well to help us with this important capital campaign. So November 20th after service, bring your hands and, uh, and bring your, your name so that we can send out packages to everybody, amen? And there you can see this wonderful picture of what's above this ceiling. You can see the actual rafters and everything. You can see that there is no insulation up there. So part of our Sacred Places campaign, uh, just to share more with people about it, is to insulate and make more energy efficient our attic so that the heat won't rise up and just float into the air. Amen. 206th anniversary giving. I think we saw that flyer already from Sherwood. So but it's in your e-blast as well. All the information is in there. So um, please take note of that. Olivia, Olivia has a vlog on YouTube. <laughs> That's very exciting. And so uh, her parents, Wendy and James, showed it to me. And so I just wanted to share it with you all because you can see what she's doing down there at TSU, Marcus. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Tennessee State University. So it's very wonderful, exciting to see her talking and showing us the campus and showing us her life and everything. It's really cool. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. Let's not start something here. <laughs> Let's not start something here. We're talking about Tennessee State University right now. <laughs> okay. Um, the 205th anniversary of Methodism in America, 250 years, is going to be at Lovely Lane in Baltimore, which is the historic place um, of the Christmas conference. And so uh, our choir members are going to be, and our music ministry is going to be participating with the Mass Choir, and there's going to be a celebration on November, did I put the date in there? November 6th. I don't know if I took, yeah, it's November 6th, next Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. So mark your calendars, plan to travel up there to Baltimore to see uh, this historic event. There's a call for volunteers for our Living History team. We have an opportunity right now to share all that God has done throughout the centuries through a new and creative way um, of having like a living history here, uh, having people in period costumes and sharing with others stories from Mount Zion. There are many, many stories that have happened over these hundreds of years. And so if you're interested in being on this committee, please contact the church at the email there or at our phone number, amen. And we see the flyer there, Henry Louis Gates has endorsed this new program that's coming out that from the National Trust. Um, and we are in round two. We've been invited to round two of this process, so it's very, very, yes, it's a praise report. Praise God. And just be praying that we make it to the final group here. On Sunday, November 13th, right after service, we're going to have our church-wide meeting. And so um, we're going to go over some of the church business and finances, but we also will have what's called a listening session where you get to um, meditate on these particular questions here and share with each other. So please mark your calendars for that as well. And there's our Saturday Supper crew from uh, the special anniversary Saturday Supper, which is on October 15th. And um, just enjoy those pictures. It was a wonderful time. Once again, we served 43 guests, a Shelter Challenge guest, and 36 seconds. Amen. And then we all ate a little few of the hot dogs too and took the bananas home to ourselves. So it was really wonderful. <laughs> so there are the pictures in your e-blast. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mount Zion, for all of my birthday wishes and for the Pastor Appreciation Month um, cards and texts and emails. Thank you so much to the SPRC for uh, blessing me in that way. I'm glad to have another trip around the sun, to still be breathing and have life, and to be able to serve here at this amazing church. Amen. And then we have our sermons from the past two weeks. We have our a worship cheer who gave us that fiery message to get lit for God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And we have the, um, the power of unity by Reverend Jacob Cogman Amen. from our anniversary. You don't want to miss. If you missed it, you need to go online and watch that on our YouTube yeah. channel. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Powerful. And then there's our book club information, uh, Reading While Black. You can still join in and sign up. Those of you who are here today, your books are here, so I just want to give them to you today so we don't have to mail them to you. <laughs> so um, uh, remind me about that. Actually, I don't know how I'll do that. I'm going to be over at Georgetown Presbyterian, but I'll get them to you. Do not worry. Do not worry. 
they're in the office there, but I have to mark off who gets what one to make sure we have them all accounted for. Anyway, and I think that some of those, the other messages are there and our standard messages are there. Um, so be sure to check your e-blast. Don't let it go to your spam. Don't let it go to your promotions. Um, but make sure you check it out each week. Amen. And that's all the announcements that I have for today. And I'm going to turn it over to our capable worship chair and our prayer chairperson to lead you all in the prayer and the closing and the benediction. Amen. So Robin, I'm not as um, I'm not hooked up to Zoom, so I'm not as good as um, Pastor Selena to be able to see both at the same time. But at this time, we will take prayer requests. And since I have the mic, I'm going to start first. I have a prayer and praise report um, this morning. Coming out ten minutes late, as I usually am. I walk out, and my car has been vandalized. There's no wheel. There's no there's no window and so the devil is busy perfect storm because I'm the worship leader and Camaro's the scripture reader and we are both in we're both in trouble um so my praise report is that they took equipment and they did not try to take me or my house so I am so thankful and blessed that that that, that is what has happened but pray for me this week because I have no car I've got to deal with the police and the insurance and and for a retiree money at the end of the month it is doesn't come until the first so we will see how all of this works out but i know that god is a way maker and so i just ask that you would um keep me in prayer and keep those in prayer that um damage my car that they forget where i live so that they are not back to come back to do any further harm to me or to my neighbors so that is my prayer request. And if there are any other prayer requests, um, we can share those um, at this time. And then Robin will, will do a, a corporate prayer for, for all. Um, I had a prayer request. Um, if you all could pray for one of my fraternity brothers, uh, his father was actually um, shot and killed in Atlanta this past weekend. Um, what happened was he was trying to confront some gentlemen that were trying to break into cars, actually. And so if you all could just pray for him and his family. Oh my God, yes. Marcus, can we get the name? Uh, his name is Darian Phillips. Darian Phillips? Mm -hmm. oh. Darian Phillips. Thank you. Any other prayer requests before we move forward? Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, that life, Lord God, here on this earth is not what we would have it to be, Lord God, but God, you are in charge of all things, Lord, for you know what everything we go through, Lord, because you're with us, because your word says that you will never leave us or forsake us. God, we ask a special prayer for Pam right now in the name of Jesus. We ask right now, Lord God, as she goes through this week without a car, Lord, oh God, that all the business that she has to tend to, Lord, and deal with the insurance company, Lord God, the police, Lord, I pray right now, Lord God, that you will remove any anxieties, any fears, Lord God, oh God, that everything will be going according to your will and purpose for her life right now in the name of Jesus. We ask right now, Lord God, that everything will be accomplished, Lord God, concerning her cause. We even pray for the perpetrators, Lord God those who committed the act, Lord God. And we ask right now that your hand of protection, Lord God, will be upon Pam, Lord God, her home, Lord God. Surround her right now, Lord God, with your prayer angels, Lord. Oh God, in Psalm 91, you said a thousand may fall at thy side, but 10,000 at thy right hand, but it would not come nigh thy dwelling. And so God, I thank you, Lord God, that even in the material things, Lord God, that they can be replaced. But Lord God, she cannot be replaced and so god we just thank you lord god for her life lord god and all that you have planned lord god in the future for her god we pray right now a special prayer right now lord god for uh the phillips right now lord jesus 
We ask right now, Lord God, that you would keep that family, Lord God, in perfect peace, Lord God, as they go through this, Lord God. One who, Lord, thought, Lord God, that they were doing the right thing, Lord. But God, sometimes when we step in, Lord God, we need your protection, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so God, now this family, Lord God, has something on their heart for someone who tried to stand up for what was right. And so God, I pray for this family right now, Lord, that you would drop every teardrop Lord God, that you will walk with them and those that you will surround with them to walk with them during this difficult time, Lord God. We just ask, Lord God, special blessings. We pray right now, Lord God, that you, O oh Lord God, will go before them. And even as they plan for the celebration of life, I pray right now, Lord God, that you will lay upon their hearts, Lord God, that they will remember the love, Lord God, that, that his son and the family will remember, Lord God, the legacy that they will leave behind. God, we just can't thank you enough. We thank you for those who journeyed into the church today, God, that you had your hand of protection upon them. And so we ask for the traveling mercy back home for them, Lord God, that they will be safe, Lord God, from all hurt, harm, and danger. For we know, Lord God, tomorrow is not promised to us. But we simply want to say, Lord God, thank you for being in our midst today. Thank you for the worship experience that we had. Thank you, Lord God, for everything that has already transpired and for this week to come. For God, we do believe that you're doing a new thing in Mount Zion. And so, God, as we receive this new thing that you're doing, we thank you, Lord God, for those members that you sent to us on last week. We thank you, Lord God, that we're able to say, Lord God, that you, oh Lord God, continue to bless us anyhow. No matter what we're going through, no matter the storms in our life, Lord God, that keep on raging, we thank you that we feel your presence. And now, God, as we come to the close of this service, we ask that you will continue to have your own way with us this week. And as we go through this week, Lord God, help us to pour out to someone else, Lord, and then fill us back up, Lord, so that we might pour into others' lives. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 So we will have our final musical moment of meditation.
Thank you, Trey. All right, so please stand as you are able for our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. Leave today with a song of praise, a song of peace, and a song of patience. We enter to worship and we leave with a spirit of love and service. With grateful hearts, we go out with faith over fear, encouraging one another, and eager to show God's love. May God's peace be with you this week. Amen.